Good morning to all our WCAT viewers. We're here this morning to talk with Merrill Mez, Mezikovsky, about his world of color and his world of art. So let us launch in to color my world with your art. How are you today, Hi, Merrill? Hi, how are you? Good. Oh, Terrific. I'm fine. Fine on this rainy morning. Yep, yep. <laughs> Well, uh, to talk to you about your art, I'm sure. looking at it and I see all kinds of uh, mediums. There is, you've done beautiful color over here next to black and white and then portraits. You are a master. Well, well thank you. <laughs> you are. Let me ask you something. Where did this all begin? In, in childhood? Yeah, uh, and around the middle of the uh, Great Depression, uh, I was about maybe four or five years old. I did a lot of uh, sidewalk chalking, and uh, we didn't know from canvases or paper or anything like that. So I'd, st I'd see people walking by, and I'd try to sketch them. Did a terrible job, but you, you can imagine what a five-year-old would do. But uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. it. It passed the time away, you know, when I wasn't playing with my friends. And uh, that's how I really started, you know. Right from the cradle, you might say. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. But well, anyway, it started uh, with sidewalk chalking. And uh, that's, that's an old art form, thousands of years, actually. And, uh, but anyway, I went, after that, I went uh, you know, to regular grade school. <coughs> and then I went into, uh, I went to uh, Mass College of Pharmacy as a pharmacist, actually. And from there, I went to work at Gillette, the Gillette Company. And I was there for 33 years until I retired uh, in 1996. What did you do at Gillette? Uh, I developed uh, different uh, products. You know, I worked on products like Foamy and Right Guard and things like hair sprays. And um, that ho the whole time that I was there, after I'd come home, I would draw maybe for half an hour, an hour. I do a little bit on weekends too. So I've been involved in artwork almost my whole life, you know. Well, tell me what, as a child, was your favorite thing to draw? Uh, well, maybe the house, flowers. Uh, once in a while, people, you know. But uh, we didn't have much money. You know, it was during the Great Depression, so. I, I just drew anything that came along, you know. What community did you, did you grow up Ch in? It was Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah, Chelsea, uh -huh. Mass. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we, uh, <coughs> my family and I lived in the uh, second floor of a three tenement. My grandmother was up on the uh, third floor. Uh, my grandfather had passed away. He was only 46. He was a carpenter, but he was involved in artwork to a degree, you know. And uh, I probably inherited that from my grandfather, my maternal grandfather. Well, carpentry is yeah. an art yeah. form. He used to do a say. lot of uh, soap s sculpturing, you know. Oh, did he? How yeah. interesting. What would he make out of soap? Well, uh, the lions, tigers, different animals, you know, dogs, cats. And uh, I did a little bit of that myself, you know. Mm -hmm. It's very inexpensive, you know, bar of soap. You oh, know. sure. We used to use ivory soap. Yeah. Big bar. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Yeah. Yeah, it must have been so, something yeah. to oh, see yeah. all those little animals made out of soap. Oh, yeah, yeah. Did you use them for, for uh, bath I, time? I, 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 I ended up uh, throwing them away eventually, you know. You, know. you can imagine what a little kid would type oh, of work I he know. would do. Oh, I know, I know. So, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You said so. that you um, had been a student at Mass uh, Pharmacy? Mass Pharmacy, yeah. And also at that time, too, uh, I went to the Massachusetts uh, College of Art. So I went there. Then I took private lessons. Then I took lessons at the Boston Museum of Fine Arts. In fact, when I met my wife, Gloria, I was going to art school five nights a week. So somehow I squeezed her in, you know. <laughs> I guess you must have. You married yeah. her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so how, how did a career in 
pharmacy translate over to Mass College of Art? Uh, well, you had a, at Gillette we did a lot of uh, inventing different things. And we were given a little bit of free time to work on our own ideas, you know. I can't go into different things that I was talking, that I was working with, but uh, it was a creative process that, that got me thinking more, more in line with uh, my artwork, you know. And uh, one thing led to another. I ended up saving all my artwork. I have dozens and dozens of pictures at home in the closets. They're all over the place in the walls. I'm sure they, the, they would yeah. be very hard to let go. Yeah, They're such yeah. beautiful pieces. Yeah. And uh, quite a range, too. Uh, for the, for instance, the one behind you uh, is perhaps my favorite because mm -hmm. of all the color. Yeah. And right now, during this pandemic, we need a lot of color in our lives yeah. because everything looks bleak. Yeah, right. Uh, right. But uh, that is really a stunning piece. Can you yeah, talk about that? Sure. Uh, I did this in 19, in uh, 22001, okay? Uh, the original is about three or four times larger than this. And we have a uh, complex painting. What I did was I read the Bible several times uh, to get some idea on what to put in there, you know. It's, it's, it was all made up out of my head, you know. But uh, what I did was, since it is a complex uh, picture, uh, I did it in pencil. I outlined the whole thing in pencil. Not every teeny detail, not every leaf, you know, that you see there. But uh, what I did was, uh, after I got it and I, I, I sort of erased certain things that I didn't like, then I filled it in with uh, oil painting. It's actually an oil painting. And uh, I've got the two lead characters, Adam and Eve, okay? Uh, they're running away from God uh, because uh, they were caught eating the forbidden fruit, okay? Now, what I did with the two characters was to symbolize all the different human beings in the world that were to come later. Uh, I put a little bit of red, yellow, brown, and black into both characters. You can't see it. It's predominantly orangey, sort of. But uh, I, I, it was just a creative type of thing that I was doing here. And I've got a, uh, this is a dwarf fish tree. And I've got scrambled eggs on the top there. And uh, there's, there's about three or four different birds, different parrots in there. And uh, I have an old swimming pool. And what I did was I, I had a stream there. I felt that... Uh, in those days, if you had a really deep river, uh, one of them could drown, and that's the whole, the, the end of the whole uh, thing, you know. So I have just a stream, you know. And uh, um, I use a uh, straight edge metal ruler to come down here. The hardest part about this painting was the, uh, this tree you know, with the light going through there, the darks and the lights. And to focus, I did that to focus <coughs> on the forbidden fruit that was, uh, that's on the ground. Otherwise, you wouldn't know, know it was there. And, uh, and that's, that's about it, yeah. I'd like to ask about that ray of light coming out of that cloud. Yeah. I, Could uh, you comment on that? Well, like I said, I, uh, I used a uh, straight edge metal ruler to, and I, it's just a very, very faint uh, bit of uh, white paint. I had to make sure that this whole painting was dry, and then I added the, uh, the ray of light over that very, very gently, you know. So th there is, no, there is some technical difficulty doing it, mm -hmm. and that's how I handled it, by mm -hmm. letting the thing dry and then add my white afterwards. It is truly beautiful. It's yeah, magnificent. Thanks, thanks. It took three months really. to draw. To, I'm to sure. Paint. I'm sure.
And to do the uh, pencil part, it took another three months. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And like I say, I made up the whole, uh, the whole picture. I'd like to go back to high school for a minute in your, yeah. your earlier years. I'd like to talk to you about um, being a high school student and how your art developed from that point on. During my high school years, I really didn't do any artwork, to be honest with you. I was involved heavily in sports, baseball, football, mostly baseball. Oh, I see. Uh, and uh, very important to uh, communicate, to be with other friends. You know, hey, we had a lot of friends. There were about 20 or 30 of us who used to hang around with each other, you know, and uh, had a lot of fun. High school was, uh, was a great time in my life. I'm so happy to hear that. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Yeah. You have a yeah. lot of memories to look back oh, yeah, on. Oh, yeah, yeah. Good ones. Yeah, yeah. Yes. So, so. Um, I know that you and Gloria travel some, right. and uh, maybe you've taken a photo. Okay. Uh, and transferred it into a piece of art? Yeah. Uh, Gloria and I, in 1972, uh, we had a friend, uh, Warren Upham, and uh, he mentioned, he was, he was uh, about 80, 83 at the time, and he mentioned uh, that we ought to go see Charlie Chaplin. He's coming to New York to the, uh, uh, well, he was supposed to go to California to get an honorary uh, recognition type of thing. And so we went to the Lincoln Center of Performing Arts and after Gloria and I had seen about 30 or 40 or 50 of Charlie Chaplin's movies, and what I did was I took one of his uh, pictures in one of his uh, movies and I did an illustration in pen and ink with white chalk highlighting the picture. And I said, you know, it would be great if I could send it to him in Veve, Switzerland. This is 1972. So I sent it there with uh, U.S. stamps and the return package, I put U.S. stamps too. And then we received it, I don't know, maybe about a month or so later. And we found out from his secretary that she had to change it to Swiss champs, uh, Swiss stamps rather. And uh, he autographed, he wrote, hello, Charlie Chaplin. So this is a, a nice keepsake. Uh, yes. Have the grandchildren get it someday, you know. Oh, sure. Yeah, so, well, you're creating so that's how history. I. You're creating history for them. Yeah, so it's a nice little uh, illustration for sure an autographed is. picture too, you know. Sure is. So. Uh, yeah, I'd like to talk with you about the black and white behind you. Yeah, okay. Uh, this picture here, uh, I, uh, I wanted to uh, refine my uh, pen and ink style. So this is pen and ink, I, I did a fairly good job on it, but I wanted to get really fine. So I went to uh, Alma Rising, who is a, a pen and ink artist in, uh, in Reading. And uh, this was the only picture, he had an old beat up picture, you know, and what I did was uh, to use a lot of technology, I converted it into this. It took a lot of work. It took actually eight months to draw that, the original. The original is about half the size. With pen and ink, you know, with this technique, I use a lot of stipples or dots and it uh, takes a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of line work in there too, but the smoke actually is all stipples. It doesn't look it. It's, it's exquisite in I, detail. I put the, the only place that you have wash is uh, right here in the stream. Everything else is pen and ink. I use a Hunt 104 pen point. It's the finest point that you can use. And uh, I'd go back and forth. I use a, uh, a leather strop and I'd go back and forth to get most of the ink off. And uh, that's how I did the uh, smoke. So it doesn't, you don't see lines in there at all. No, yeah. no lines. Lot, it's just beautiful. A lot of patience. Mm -hmm. Alma had a lot of patience mm -hmm. too. Yeah. So mm -hmm. anyway, I took lessons with him for two years, <coughs> and then I lost contact with him, and uh, eventually he passed away. Oh, he did. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. It was a nice time in my life. We used to right. we used to care, talk about baseball and sports, you know, mm -hmm. and because he was actually colorblind, 
Oh. He only, all his work was uh, black and white. And he worked over at Harvard for 45 years. And uh, so that's how I got involved with uh, doing a lot of uh, pen and inks. Here's, uh, here's a, uh, <coughs> this is interesting. I did, uh, this is a pen and ink, and uh, using this technique, and there's no wash in this picture, uh, picture at all. And what I do, the, the feet, it looks like a wash, but what I did was I, I put the ink on the Hunt 104 point, <coughs> and then I go back and forth, and then when it's just about dry, then I'd work on the feet. And it, it, it looks like, like I say, it looks like a wash, but it, it isn't. And it was a dump, duck stamp contest that I entered. Had to be five inches by seven inches. And there's about 1,500 artists around the country. And what they do is they have to show every feather on whatever birds you show. Usually it's, it's ducks. And uh, a lot of times they use uh, uh, watercolor or oil paints. Um, I, I chose uh, pen and ink. But anyway, <laughs> you weren't supposed to sign it. And after I got it back, though, I signed it. And I made prints. I used uh, Rembrandt Brown. And uh, an, I, I, I gathered a couple of pictures and then sort of rearranged them, you know. And like I say, you had to see every feather, a lot of, a lot of details, mostly stipples on this. So that's well, how I... It's uh, another beautiful piece. Yeah. Have you created any other new art during the pandemic, and how are you handling that? Yeah, unfortunately, I don't... Uh, let's see, the, uh, this painting over here, I call it just a mountain. It's, uh, I made a painting about... It's about maybe 10 times bigger than that. And I gave it to somebody as a gift out in Kentucky. I uh, had it shipped to Kentucky. Anyway, uh, what I do is I use my technique and I pencil. I pencil it just the way I wanted it. And I just paint right over it. Uh, it took a long time, but uh, it took almost a year to do it. And uh, anyway, so, so this couple, they were happy campers, you know, they have it over in their fireplace, you know. Right, they, they yeah, must so love it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So I did that and I did about six other uh, paintings mm -hmm. during that time. Mm -hmm. I think I saw them on the way in. They're yeah, very, yeah, very nice. Yeah. Yes. Now, another thing, um, this has nothing to do with the pandemic, but I used to go to uh, the Boston Museum of Fine Arts, and uh, we'd have a little bit about maybe anywhere from 10 to 20 artists, and we'd all be given paper and pencil and uh, <coughs> we would do speed drawings anywhere from three minutes to uh, half an hour. Now this picture has three different people in it and there's one girl on a stool and there's uh, two other people looking on. And uh, I did it in three minutes. And uh, it's, it's, it's not a masterpiece, but uh, you, know, you figure what can you do in three minutes, right? Why would an instructor want you to accomplish speed drawing? Is it discipline? Well, what, what if you have a parade and you have all the, the military or whoever's Very on a bike or on a motorcycle or something? Right. You have to be able to do it real fast. Mm -hmm. Now, <coughs> the, I translated this into these pictures here. Now, that's Gloria, my wife Gloria, sitting on a uh, chair in the kitchen reading a book. She pulled, I don't know, it took maybe half an hour to three quarters of an hour to do. And here's Gloria with our uh, granddaughter sitting on a sofa. And uh, there's no great detail, but you know it's two people. And, uh, and that's it. Came up pretty good. It certainly did. Certainly and so did yeah. this one. Yeah. Yes. But like I said, the whole secret is to use, <coughs> use small paper. If you use large paper, it's going to take you a, a lot longer to do it. S small paper, short time, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that's it. And these are all uh, actually uh, number two uh, pencil. Um, here, yeah, this thing here is a. Uh, I was took an etching course, 
and somebody uh, was sitting across me from me, and uh, I did that etching. Very nice. So lovely. It almost looks a little bit like a <laughs> Rembrandt. I didn't intend it to do to look like that, but mm -hmm. that's, that's how, how it came, came out. out. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I'd like to ask you, Merrill, have you received any awards for your work? No, no, no. Have First you all, displayed I it? I, I don't enter that many. I only maybe entered a couple of uh, mm -hmm. contests. But do you, do you, um, God only knows what they're looking for. You yeah. know, you don't do you know. go to art shows? Oh, I, yeah, once in a while, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Do you have a favorite artist? Well, my favorite all-time artist is uh, Millet, French artist. But he did a lot of farm scenes. I don't have, uh, this is the uh, closest to a Malay that you have here. That's We're actually an illustration that I did. Believe it or not, I did that black ink on white illustration board. And what I did was I had a hundred prints made, Rembrandt Brown. Took one of those and I colored it in pencil. And then I had uh, this large print made up from that uh, picture. It's an interesting deviation from your other work. Yeah, yeah. Is, did you actually visit to visit that place? Uh, we were in Ireland. I I, I wasn't uh, <coughs> there at that time. This this scene never existed really. I thought I'd put in a couple of geese. Just a little character so in, those, in those haystacks. This piece was just born of your imagination? Yeah, 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 yeah. I love the horse. No, oh, yeah, they, You see that picture next to you on your uh, right side? Yes. Uh, that's interesting. It's uh, what I did with the background is ebony pencil, and the foreground is carbon pencil. And if you take that picture outside, it makes the petrified wood look like it's coming off the paper. It does. Yeah, and that's, that's the original, actually. Now, on this one here, my mother had a, a uh, there was an old little beaten up piece of black and white picture of her. And what I did was I drew this in pencil, very carefully, freehand, and, uh, and then I very carefully uh, painted it. Yeah. I see that it is such a sad expression. Yeah, I, I, I actually entitled this an immigrant girl. Uh, she was scared stiff, actually. They came over right after the Titanic. I see. Right, right after in 1912. Terrible tragedy Yeah, so they were, they were was. scared. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why she's got that scared look. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Do you have a name for her? Hmm? Does she have a name? Well, Ruth. Ruth. Yeah, Ruth. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Okay. And what about and the one next to her? Uh, this when we were in, uh, when Gur and I were in Chile, there was a tinsmith there. We took a picture of it, so this is actually an illustration too. And I made my own colors and everything. Something interesting too. Uh, I always used to sign my name Merrill Mizakovsky. Now I do it Merrill Mez. It's easier, and then I date it underneath. Now this thing here, Jim McCready. This is an illustration. He did a. We took a picture of him didn't look anything like this. And I created a stormy sea. And uh, it took a long time to actually draw that for me to be satisfied with the, uh, the content, you know. This reminds me of, of, the, of a Van Gogh, oh, the, yeah, the yeah. sky. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's funny, because there was, there was a lot of lightning that day. You could see the lightning yes, here coming down. Yes, I can see down. it. And, so uh, is, is he in the middle of a storm there? Actually, I call it treacherous sea. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah. It's so. really beautiful. I love the colors, and yeah. you work with such beautiful, beautiful yeah, shades. The thanks. turquoise and the lavender and the oranges. Beautiful. This, this is a uh, a pencil, mm -hmm. an Irish scene. Mm -hmm. Again, they had, I had an old picture, but I I modified it. It didn't look. It just didn't exist. And I did that in pencil. Now this one here, here's a. Uh, pen and ink illustration, uh, the jasmine pickers. They're out oh. in the field of picking jasmine. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I worked on this a long time. And uh, it's mostly stipples, but it's got, I wanted to give it like a classic type of look. 
and uh, you've got uh, five people here picking jasmine flowers. Now you've ca talked a few times about stipple, and I don't know what that means. The stipple is a dot. It's oh, a, it's a, a dot. A fancy name for it. I see. It's a I technical just, name for I wondered, dots. And I wondered maybe if our viewers yeah. might have asked the same question, what a stipple yeah. is. Yeah. So now we know. Yeah. And uh, <coughs> like I say, I used a, uh, a Hunt 104. A lot of times I would use it upright, and then other times I would invert it. <coughs> I could get even a finer line, you know. And uh, get some nice effects with it, you know. Mm -hmm. I haven't done it for a while. It's tough on the eyes, you know. Yeah. Very tough in the eyes. Well, right now, none of us can travel. Right, right. So, yeah. what are you doing to keep yourself busy? Well, I'm trying to think of uh, other artwork to do. Mm -hmm. I do a lot of reading, too, you know. Oh, by the way, before I forget, uh, this one here. Cahill Gibran wrote a poem, The Prophet, and he did it throughout the uh, book. He did it in pencil. And I wanted to give it some color. So that's what I did, watercolor. Beautiful. Yeah. Very nice. So actually here you have represented a di different, there's about six different media mm -hmm. that are represented here today. And uh, I think that's about it, yeah. Well, I do have a few more questions for sure, you. Sure, sure. I'd like to know if you have any other areas in your, in your life where one art laps, o crosses over into another, for example, uh, maybe you play a musical instrument, something like that? Yeah. Uh, I, in the past, I played uh, the four-string banjo and a clarinet. And I did it for a few years of each. Did you play it within a group or just, no, just by myself, yourself? Just, just my own pleasure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Try to broaden your horizons, you know? Yeah. And that was it, yeah. Well, I would like to show our viewers a book that you collaborated on with with your wife Gloria. Here it is. Yeah. And this is a book called Goggles for a Goop. And you did all the illustrations, didn't you? Gloria yeah. did the wrote the story. She, right. That's uh, amazing. I did the cover uh, about forty years ago, forty one years ago. And then the other I followed up with the other drawings. Mm -hmm. Later on, I'm just know. going to open to a random page so our viewers can see a little bit more of your artwork and look what we found. Yeah, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. Just o originally, uh, I wanted Gloria to get an illustrator to work on the book because I had other interests too, you know. But uh, it ended up that uh, I. Well, I I've read the, the book, and it's a great little story. Yeah, yeah. So oh, I wanted she wrote our viewers to know about that. Oh, yeah. And then, uh, not only do you have that one, but you have a perfectly snowy day. Yeah. And this was the first book that you and Gloria published uh, together. Yeah. And um, Gloria wrote this story in rhyming fashion. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. it actually is the story of, of Snowy Day that she found herself in, home from school, and yeah. she wrote a story about a perfectly snowy yeah. day. So she borrowed from her own life, uh, from her own life with her father, yeah. and uh, a perfectly snowy day that she got to stay home from school. Yeah. So we had a lot lovely. of fun yes, working I, on the two books you did. together. You did. Uh, but uh, it was enjoyable. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, for the benefit of the viewers out there, if you um, ever want to do something, I always start with pencil, number two pencil. Use, uh, Why a number two? Uh, well, it's inexpensive, and uh, it's readily available. And uh, I always found it best to use a medium textured paper. If you use very smooth paper, it just it doesn't come out as nice as I'd like it anyway. And if, if the paper is very coarse, if the texture is very coarse, um, it doesn't give you that effect. Now when I did that Muir, 
that picture there with the carbon, with the uh, petrified wood coming off the paper. You have to use medium grade paper. If you can look at the side of the paper, it looks like hills and valleys. And what I do is I make the pencil real sharp and I can go into the valleys. And that's how you get that a three-dimensional, I call it a three-dimensional drawing. And I, I did uh, a couple of those. I can actually do it with colored pencils too. Mm -hmm. And uh, you get some nice effects using medium grade uh, textured paper. I'd start with paper for paper and pencil. And then go from there if you have an interest, you know, just fiddle around. You can do pictures of. If, if someone in the, commu in the Wakefield community wants to try his or hand at art, um, where would they get this paper? Where would they oh, buy I can get paper? it in any art store. Any art store. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Michael's maybe. Okay. It'd right. be easy. Yeah, you get a whole pad. I have, I guess I do have another question for you. <laughs> have you thought about giving art classes? Uh, no, unfortunately, no, because I have so many interests that, uh, and uh, as the years roll by, your time is limited too, so, you know, you have family and everything, you know. I understand. But, uh, you know, if somebody asks me, you know, I'll give them uh, a little advice, you know, here and there, you know, but mm -hmm. outside that, I, uh, hmm. I'm so busy with the mm -hmm. grandchildren and the family and everybody, you know. Well, speaking of grandchildren, did any of them inherit your talent or any of your uh, children? Uh, Ethan. Ethan likes drawing. He does a lot of drawing. He, uh, in fact, he's uh, into painting now, too. He is. And how old yeah. is he? He's uh, 13 years old. He's 13. He's done, uh, recently he's done uh, uh, some paintings, yeah, hanging in his house. And... Uh, he seems to be uh, happy doing it, you know, so we're, we're watching him anyway. What a joy. Yeah. What yeah. a joy to see that. Yeah, yeah. Well, Merrill, thank you so much for being with us today. Oh, you're welcome. My at pleasure. The WCAT studio, and this is, this is a combination of color my world and art from the heart. Yeah. Would you say that's accurate? Yeah, I'd say it is. Yeah. I, I forgot to mention that. Uh, Mary Iskanian, who lives at uh, Brightview yes. uh, Senior Center, uh, she saw some of my uh, artwork on WCAT, and it was her idea to have me <laughs> interviewed. Well, thank you, Mary. So, thank you. And I yeah. do remember Mary Iskanian from my yeah. own high school years. Yeah. Uh, Gloria, Gloria, she was one of Gloria's uh, teachers yes. at uh, Lynn English. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, well, good. Anyway. Well, thank you again, and it's been a pleasure, well, and I wish you all the best with your art and your, uh, mm. I know that Gloria has an, um, a uh, cooking show here, right. yeah. and uh, we just have to keep moving along yep. during this pandemic and not let anything slip past us. That's right. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thank you Thanks, again. Gail. Thank, thank you, you. Meryl.